Hello there, hello there. Welcome to CXC Math TV. And today we will be looking at frequency tables, a really, really, really nice topic. And so in this topic, first we have to remember what are the different types of data. Discrete data, continuous data, group data, and group data, right? That's our objective first. We need to distinguish different types of data before we can actually look at the different frequency tables that we use for the different types of data, all right? So first thing we need to know is what is discrete data. Now discrete data, discrete just means countable. Discrete means countable. So data that takes finite or whole number values. For example, the number of boys in a class, the number of girls in a class, right? Those are discrete data. Or maybe you want to know um, the number of, the number of persons in the tax office line throughout the week, Monday to Friday, right? Those are discrete data. The next is continuous data, and this is data that it can take infinite values. For example, heights of students, right? Someone could be 185 centimeters tall, right? Someone is 185 centimeters tall, and at the same time, we could say that person is 184.6 centimeters tall, or maybe we could say that person is 184.5921 centimeters tall, right? And it goes on and on and on, right? That's continuous data. The next type of data is group data. This is data that it is grouped in. We group them by category, all right? So... Sometimes they're going to sit in the frequency table, we categorize, right? Maybe you see, for example, looking at ages, right? For some information, we're doing a research. Maybe you see, we'll put ages 5 to 7, then 8 to 10, then 11 to 15. That's group data. It's in category. Then ungrouped data is data just given as it is, right? Data just given as it is, ungrouped or raw data. Now, the frequency table, this is the table that we'll use to organize our data showing the frequencies for the respective values and categories. All right. So here are some questions and I already laid out the answer there for you. All right. Just to review discrete and continuous data, the number of suitcase lost by an airplane or an airline discrete because it has to be what? Finite. Right, so since it's finite, which is, which means countable, it's discrete. The height of corn plants, height of corn plants, continuous, because why? It is not a fixed or finite value. You could say the height is two meters tall, or you could say it's two point zero one meters tall, or you could say it's two point zero one three two four meters tall, and so forth. The ears of the corn produce clearly discrete or finite. The number of Green M&Ms in a bag. So you burst the sweetie bag and you count out the number of M&Ms. The time it takes for a car battery to die, that's continuous. The production of two meter by weight, continuous. Weight is continuous. Time is continuous. Easy. Finally, now we can look at constructing frequency table. But before we, we look at the topic, we have to first consider this scenario. Right, so Mr. Ferguson, that's me. I'm giving my fourth form class a test. And the test is out of 10. And now it says the data represents the mark scored by the 50 students on the mathematics test. So these are the scores, right? I have somebody getting a two, somebody getting six, somebody getting five, and a brilliant student getting 100. And I have a couple brilliant students, right? Now, all of this information, right, for the 50 students all of that could be represented by a table notice i could first thing write a category saying scores and write a category saying frequency and i could say okay let's look at how many persons got a zero i see this person right here stand out so i put one then i look how many persons get a one that's one person that's two person that's three person and so forth. So I could say, okay, persons that get a one is three. Then I look how many persons get a two, and I continue until I look at how many persons got a 10, which was, was it three? One, two, three. 
and so forth. So all of that information could be represented in this table right here. And this table is what we call our frequency table. That's all. This is all is a frequency table. Very easy. All right. So here's a question for you to do, right? Just to, you know, get some practice in. It says, Mr. Ferguson is creating his action plan for the academic year 2023-2024 for his 20 mathematics students to do six C C C mathematics. His predicted grades are given below. Construct a frequency table to display the student's expected grade. Pause the video and attempt this question. Okay, so first thing we have to look at now is what, right? How many students Mr. Ferguson predicted to get once? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So when you're creating now your frequency table, first thing you need a column saying predicted grades, and then another one saying the frequency. So in this case now, the predicted grades were one, two, and a three. How many fer persons Mr. Ferguson predicted to get ones? That was 10. Then we'll look at how many persons Mr. Ferguson predicted to get a two. So we realize Mr. Ferguson predicted Malik to get a two, Jermaine to get a two, Marlon to get a two, Alex to get a two, Ricardo to get a two, Marlon to get a two. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is right here. Then now we need to write down how many per persons Mr. Ferguson predict to get a three. So three would be one, two, three, four. And we put four here. That's all. That's your frequency table. Just like that, we are finished. This is an easy topic. Now, key terminologies, right? So, key terminology to know is class interval. And class interval does allow us to, you know, to represent data by categories, right? And now we have to understand what we call class limits. This is even more important. Now, class limit, there's always going to be an upper class limit and a lower class limit. The, lo the lesser value is your lower class limit. The bigger value is your upper class limit. Then now we have what we call class boundaries. Class boundaries, this is when you add 0.5 or subtract 0.5 to your upper class limit and your lower class limit. We do what? We add 0.5 and we subtract 0.5. Add 0.5 to the upper, subtract 0.5 to the lower. Let's look at why. For example, right? Let's say, for example, you have categories like this. One, two five and then six to ten and then you have a data that is 10.4 and you also have 11 to 15 where would the 10.4 lie the 10.4 would most lie in the six to ten and if you had the data 10.6 this one would lie in the 11.5 because what do we do for 11 you'd actually start from numbers like 10.5 You'd go all the way up to 14 point. Well, actually, you start from 10.50, go all the way up to 14.49. And that would give you all the numbers in this category, right? 15.49, my apologies. Right? And that would give you all the numbers in that category. And so that is why class boundaries are either add 0.5 or subtract 0.5 from the upper and lower class limit. Then you have midpoint. The midpoint of the class interval is just found by adding the upper class limit and the lower class limit and dividing by two. Now, the best way to understand these is to do questions, all right? So it sounds like it's a lot, but it's very easy. Finally, you need to know your class width or your class size. And this is the difference between your upper class boundary and your lower class boundary. That's class size. You have to remember it. So we're going to do an example together. So, you know, it's going to make it a lot easier seeing how we're going to utilize everything that we just learned in a question. So it says construct a frequency table to represent the data, right? So this right here, we need to construct a frequency table, 
right? So pause the video, attempt this question for me, please. Construct your frequency table. All right, now this is the frequency table you should have obtained, 120 to 129, right? You just go through and look at everything in the 120s, right? I'm just circling the 120s. And after looking at everything in the 120s, it should get 10, right? So no biggie. I'm just circling the 120s. Those are the 10 of them. No, no problem, right? And you'd continue for the rest. But that's not the part of the question I want to focus on. I want to focus on this part now. It says, what is the class size of the interval 120 to 129? Pause the video and attempt this question. Okay, so now you have to remember the class size. The class size C, you would say, is what? The upper class boundary minus the lower class boundary. The class size is the upper class boundary minus the lower class boundary. Now, you have to remember the upper class boundary, that is, you add 0.5 to 129 minus, you subtract 0.5 from 120. So, you always add, you always add to the upper class boundary, you always subtract from the lower class boundary. So, when we do that, we're getting 10. The next one, what is the midpoint of the class interval 160 to 169? Again, midpoint is at the upper limit and the lower limit and divide it by 2. So you add them and divide it by 2. That would give you the mid value is 164.5. Now it says what is the upper class and lower class boundaries of this interval? So the lower class boundary would be subtract 0.5. And the upper class boundary would be you add 0.5. So 159.5. And that's it. Easy, easy, easy. I'll finish. Nice. Okay. Now I want you to just complete this table. So pause the video and complete this table really quick. Okay, now let's go through it. In completing, lower class boundary, 119.5 for this class interval. Upper class, 129.5. Upper class limit is just 129. Lower class limit, just the 120. Let's write down the others. Subtract 0 0.5 to get 129.5. One, add 0 0.5 to the upper class limit, 139.5. Over here, you put 130. And 139. Let's just rush through now. 140, 149, 150, 159, 160, 169. Over here, 149.5, 159.5, 169.5. One thirty nine point five, one forty nine point five, one fifty nine point five, and that's it. Okay, one more question, right? One more question. You see a question like this now in the exam. It says complete the table and answer the following questions. So pause the video and answer this question. Okay, let's start with what they said first. They said complete the table. So to complete the table, they want midpoint. Midpoint is average of the two. So you need to add, for this one, you need to add the 10 plus 39, then you divide it by two. That's 24.5. Then you're going to add 40 plus 59, then you divide it by two. That is going to give us 119. Well, that should be 99 rather divided by 2, which is 49.5. Then we add 60 and 69 to get 129. You will divide that by 2 to get 64.5. 80 plus 100 is 90. 90, 80 plus, 
100 is 180 divided by 2 is 90. So the midpoint there is 90. That completes that table. All you do is average the two numbers. What's a class size? How do you find class size? Upper class boundary minus lower class boundary. We work that out, we get 10. Remember, upper class boundary, 9.5. Add 0 0.5 to 9, subtract 0 0.5 from 0. Doing that again, add 0 0.5 to 39, subtract 0 0.5 from 10, we get 30. Down here, add 0 0.5 to the 49, and then subtract 0 0.5 from 40. And we get 10. Now it says, what is the upper class boundary of the interval 70 to 79? Upper class boundary is 79.5. Always remember boundaries is where you add 0.5 or subtract 0.5. What is the lower limit? Lower limit of 60 to 69, you sub, you do what? Sorry, I was about to say subtract, but that's very wrong. What you do is lower limit, you just look at the lesser number in the interval. Given that a pass score is 60 or more, how many persons pass the test? For this one, pass score is 60. Here is 60 going down. So those who pass is 23 persons get 60 and above. And then 5 persons get 70 to 79 and 1 get 80 to 100. So in total, the number of persons that pass is 23 plus 5 plus 1, which is... 28 and 1 is 29. So 29 students pass the test. That's it. 29 students pass the test. And that's it. That concludes this video on frequency table. Really hope it was beneficial. Just make sure to keep on practicing. And over time, all of this will just become so much easier. All right. So stay tuned for more. Make sure to just like and subscribe. Have a blessed day.